plastic waste is a global problem, and Nigeria is no exception. With a population of over 200 million people, the country generates an estimated 32 million tons of waste annually. Of this waste, an alarming amount is made up of single-use plastics. Our world today is filled with plastic. From our homes to the streets, it's everywhere. But what happens to all this plastic once we're done with it? Recycling plants are working hard to reduce the amount of waste going to landfills and also contribute to the creation of a more sustainable future for Nigeria. I need dumping. So dumping eh, we go do it to buy water and we am allowed to see be. So we be, I want enough to need, I want to see one. So now we gather jo. So I am allowed to. So we go say we need United Waste Recycling. So I only cycle. The journey begins here, sorting the plastics. The first step in the sorting process is to separate the different types of plastic based on the kind of material, size, and color. Workers also sort into different categories such as high-density polyethylene and low-density polyethylene. Each type of plastic has unique properties and requires a different recycling process. Here, sorting is done manually. In manual sorting, workers separate plastic waste based on color by hand. This involves visually inspecting each item and placing it into different piles. However, this process can be time-consuming and requires trained eye to identify subtle color differences. Color sorting is a critical stage in the sorting process. It ensures that the final recycled product is of uniform color and quality. If a black plastic container is mixed with a white plastic container, the resulting recycled plastic may have a hideous gray or off-white color. Ne color by color, color by color. The end of the year, manufacturer can have to produce, or the one to be produced. Color sorting is also important because different colors of plastic can have different properties and be used for different applications. The sorting stage is hard work. It can also be very dangerous. These workers are not even provided gloves and protective clothing to avoid contact with hazardous waste and sharp objects like broken glass. Plastic waste often contains labels, stickers, and adhesives that can interfere with the recycling process. And these labels and adhesives can cause defects, discoloration, and other quality issues. So, to remove these labels, workers use a blade to carefully cut them away. Once labels have been removed from white-colored plastic bottles, the bottles are thoroughly washed to remove food waste, dirt, and other impurities. These contaminants can negatively impact the quality of the recycled plastic. Washing the plastic waste also helps to reduce the amount of residual odor. Next, big plastic containers are cut into smaller pieces. Cutting the plastic waste into smaller pieces allows for more efficient and effective grinding. Large plastic buckets take longer to grind. By cutting the plastic into smaller pieces beforehand, the grinding process becomes faster and more effective, resulting in finer and more uniform plastic particles. Cutting the plastic waste into smaller pieces also helps to reduce the wear and tear on the grinding machinery. Large plastic buckets can be quite tough and may cause damage to the machine over time. Now, it's time for grinding. The grinding machine uses a series of blades to shred the plastic waste into small pieces. These pieces are then passed down into a granulator in the machine, which further breaks down the plastic into even smaller pieces. The final product is small plastic pellets or granules that can be used to make a variety of plastic products, from bottles to toys. After grinding, the shredded pieces need to be cleaned, and the cleaning is done here, this way. Here is a bag of clean granules, and here is one with the impurities removed off the granules. The clean plastic granules are then sun-dried before they are further processed. 
Once the granules are dried, pigment is added. The primary purpose of adding pigment to plastic is to enhance its aesthetic appeal and make it more visually attractive to consumers. Another important purpose of pigment in plastic is to hide impurities. During the manufacturing process, plastic can sometimes pick up impurities that can affect its appearance. Adding pigment can help to cover up these impurities and make the plastic look more smooth. Different colors of pigment are available, ranging from bright and vibrant colors to more subdued or earthy tones. The color white is being used now because the intended plastic product is meant to be white. After the pigment is added, a ring magnet is used to remove any iron or metal particles that may be present in the granules. The magnet is run over the granules and any iron present is attracted to the magnet and removed. Magnet separation is an important step in the plastic recycling process because it removes any ferrous materials that may be present in the plastic. These materials can cause damage to processing equipment or weaken the plastic, making it unsuitable for use in certain applications. Removing these materials ensures that the recycled plastic meets the required standards for use in various industries, such as food packaging or medical devices. Next, the granules get fed into the hopper of this machine, called the extruder machine. Once the granules are loaded into the extruder, they are heated and melted using a combination of heat and mechanical energy. The plastic is then transformed into a molten state, ready for extrusion. After being melted, the plastic is forced through a die, which determines the shape and size of the extrudate. The die can be designed in a variety of shapes and sizes to produce different types of plastic products. As the plastic exits the die, it is still in a molten state and must be cooled and solidified quickly to maintain its shape. One common method for cooling and solidifying the extruded plastic material is to pass it through a water bath immediately after it exits the die. A water bath is a long tank filled with cool water that is positioned directly beneath the die. As plastic exits the die, it falls into the water bath and is submerged. The cool water in the bath helps to rapidly reduce the temperature of the plastic, causing it to solidify and maintain its shape. The water also helps to remove any residual heat in the plastic, preventing deformation or warping. The design of the water bath is critical to ensure a high quality extruded product. The water must be maintained at a consistent temperature, and the bath must be long enough to provide adequate cooling time for the plastic materials. If the plastic cools too quickly or too slowly, the plastic might shrink or crack. The speed at which the plastic travels through the water bath must also be carefully controlled to prevent deformation or other issues. The plastic extrusion process is a valuable manufacturing technique that enables manufacturers to produce products with a high degree of consistency and quality. The extruder machine is also equipped with additional features that enable it to filter away impurities. It is fitted with a screen changer, which is designed to remove contaminants such as dust, debris, or other materials from the plastic material as it moves through the extrusion process. After the plastic material has been extruded and solidified, it is shredded into smaller pieces. By breaking the plastic material into smaller pieces, it can be processed more efficiently and consistently. Smaller pieces have a larger surface area to volume ratio, allowing them to be heated and melted more evenly during the recycling process. Once this is done, the pellets are now ready to be processed into new plastic products. The shredded pure plastic pieces are fed into this machine called the injection molding machine which first heats the plastics to a high temperature, causing it to melt and become a liquid. Once the plastic waste is melted, the machine is equipped with a screw that rotates and pushes the melted plastic into a mold. The mold is usually made of metal and is designed to create a specific shape and size of the plastic product. As the plastic is pushed into the mold, it takes on the shape of the mold and begins to cool and solidify. When the plastic solidifies, the mold is opened and the newly formed plastic product 
is ejected. The injection molding process can be used to create a wide variety of plastic products, from small toys to large automotive parts. The process is highly automated, and the machines can produce large quantities of products quickly and efficiently. Finally, the new plastic products are thoroughly inspected for any excess plastic. The ones that pass the quality control inspection get packaged and sent out for sale. As we've seen throughout this video, plastic recycling is a complex and challenging process, but one that is essential for protecting our planet and preserving our resources for future generations. By recycling plastic, we can conserve valuable resources, reduce our carbon footprint, and prevent plastic from ending up in our oceans and harming marine life. If you enjoyed this episode, subscribe and drop a comment. Thank you for watching.